I'm Cornelia and I would like to welcome you and within the next couple of minutes I would like to give you insights into two different types of artificial insemination, the ICI and the IUI. Artificial insemination often is the first cause of action when assisted reproductive technology or ART is needed. And it is a method that does not require highly sophisticated technology. As I just mentioned, ICI and IUI both are treatment types for artificial insemination. So they're the same category, but what is actually the difference between them? Well, it is simply the place where the sperm sample is deposited. And you can easily memorize that when you have a look at the meaning um, of the abbreviations. ICI stands for intracervical insemination and IUI stands for intrauterine insemination. And uh, so already the name of the treatment um, indicates the sperm's destination that is either the cervix or the uterus. And um, to visualize this difference, let us recall um, some details of female anatomy. So here in this picture, you can see the female reproductive system that mainly consists of the vagina, which is the outer part. Then you have the cervix, that is um, the neck of the womb. And the womb is also referred to as uterus, and the uterus is connected to the fallopian tubes, and they are attached to the ovaries that contain the eggs. So when a woman conceives naturally, um, the sperm have to travel from the vagina through the cervix and to the uterus, and then up into the fallopian tubes. And um, at the time of ovulation, and when an egg is released into the fallopian tubes and when sperm are already awaiting the egg in the fallopian tube, they can meet and they can unite and they can lead to fertilization. So the meeting point for sperm and egg is the fallopian tube. And when artificial insemination is, um, is, is used or is performed, then for the ICI, the intracervical insemination, the sperm is deposited here in the cervix. So this is marked with the number one in the picture. And if you perform intrauterine insemination, then the sperm is directly deposited here in the uterine cavity. It is marked with number two here in the picture. Um, IUI and ICI, they are affordable and non-invasive treatment options, and they increase the likelihood of fertilization as sperm is deposited closer to the egg. Um, in contrast to other treatment types like IVF or ICSI, um, they are less expensive, as in general, no hormone stimulation, uh, no surgery and no embryo culture in the IVF laboratory is needed. It is an easy method that can be optimized with um, ovulation induction if necessary. But on the other hand, we have to say that it is also the treatment type with the lowest success rates. So in terms of pregnancy rates, um, an insemination cycle has um, a likelihood of um, achieving a pregnancy of 8 to 14%. So in general, um, several insemination cycles are needed in order to get pregnant. In terms of success rates, if we uh, directly compare ICI and IUI, uh, the intrauterine insemination is uh, slightly better. It is a little bit more successful and this might be the case because you use washed sperm where you have already selected the best sperm, the fastest moving sperm, and you place it directly into the uterine cavity, so a little bit closer to the egg. And you um, are able to bypass the cervix and its mucus and therefore can negate any problems related to that. The success rates of artificial insemination are um, influenced by numerous factors. So for example, if you seek for professional assistance, um, a medical doctor, fertility doctor is able to control and, and monitor um, the menstrual cycle. He, he or she can um, 
analyze the hormone levels and control the growth of the eggs and the fo follicles by ultrasound scans. Um, another important factor that influences the outcome is the ovarian reserve. Um, women cannot produce new eggs. They have a stock, a fixed stock of eggs in their ovaries and this stock is created already before birth and it varies in size. Um, so there are women um, having only a, a, a small ovarian reserve and some are really lucky and have a good ovarian reserve. The ovulation patterns also matters. Um, um, uh, the best prerequisite is given when you have a normal and regular menstrual cycle. And of course, sperm quality is important too. Um, you, you get the best results when you are able to inseminate at least an amount of 5 million progressively forward moving sperm. Then the timing of the, of the insemination, we have heard already before that you might have the best outcome when um, the insemination procedure takes place just slightly before the ovulation um, occurs so that the sperm are already awaiting the egg in the fallopian tube. And um, maybe the most crucial factor that has um, the biggest influence on the outcome of any type of fertility treatment is the patient's age. My further take home messages for the artificial insemination are, if you cannot use your partner's sperm, if that is not an option due to severe um, male um, sperm deficiencies, then you can use donor sperm from a sperm bank. And it is a good option as uh, the donor is tested for infectious diseases and the most common hereditary diseases. In terms of parental rights, it's also a good choice um, to use an official donor and it's better than taking a private person or a friend. Um, regarding the risk of infection for IUI and ICI, sterile technique is needed as uh, the cervix and the cavity of the uterus is entered. And last but not least, if you have not conceived after six cycles, then it is um, a good idea if you consider other treatment options like IVF and ICSI. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have enjoyed this part of our Cryos webinar series and I wish you all the best for your journey to your own family. Thank you very much. Take care and goodbye.